two six that will be presenting for us. And I'm Megan, so if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat box. Um, also, put your name and where you're from and your job title in the chat box for attendance purposes and things like that, as well as we will be recording the session, but it's not going to go out to the wide, wide world. It is just for purposes later if we want to go back and take a look at what's happening and be like, oh man, this was really great stuff. Let me remember it. And a side note, I'll eventually turn off my camera, but my students behind me have given permission to be on camera. They all have their waivers released and signed and everything. They are young adults um, hoping here at Advent Health in Altamont. And I'm a Seminole County school teacher for our transition program. So welcome. And without further ado, we also have Franklin on if you need any help from Franklin. Thank you, Franklin, for Project 10. And then ladies, we are ready to go, I think. So again, this is Discoverability Formulae, formally 26. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Roberta Saddle. I'm the director of operations here at 26 Re um, Discoverability. <laughs> uh, we just went through a, a big, huge rebrand, which we're really excited about. We'll get into in a couple minutes. Um, so I oversee um, some of the operations that happen here at Discoverability, and I also oversee the placement and the OJT department. I'm joined by uh, Jamie, who can introduce herself. Sure. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And, and Megan and Franklin, thank you for helping us get set up earlier. It's very much appreciated. Um, again, my name is Jamie Cawthorn. Um, I am a licensed mental health counselor in the state of Florida. I've been working in the mental health industry since 2013, um, both doing individual and group counseling within the private and public school settings. Um, Years ago, I was also a transition coordinator within a private school setting, and that uh, path sort of led me to what was then 26 Resources. Um, I joined the team in 2016 as a vocational evaluator, um, and in 2019, I transitioned into the role of the supervisor of the vocational evaluation department. Um, in that role, I, I oversee all the vocational evaluations, uh, the psychological evaluations, and uh, develop team training. So, thank you again for joining us this morning. I know it's been a, a lot of information, a lot of conferences, uh, a lot of presentations, but we appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. All right. So, um, all right. So our goal today is really just to educate you all about um, some of the services that are available to transition uh, students. We're going to start with a, an overview on our agency. We're going to talk a little bit about who qualifies for the services. And we're really gonna get into the meat of what we do. Uh, we're gonna discuss the different services that we provide to transition students, which include vocational evaluations, career exploration. We're gonna get into uh, some training classes and more information about our self-advocacy program, our pre-placement training program. We're gonna talk about work-based learning experiences, also known as OJTs. And we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, our placement department and what we do. Um, on the placement side of things. So um, just a little bit about discoverability. So this is a picture of our director, Patrick Scott. Um, he was actually a vocational rehabilitation counselor uh, over 16 years ago. And he started this nonprofit organization. We are 501c3. Um, the goal was to have an agency in the area that provided great service, um, provided good customer service, and also provided a lot more information um, to vocational rehabilitation counselors. So uh, next week, we are celebrating our 16 year anniversary. So we're really excited about that. Um, and I just wanna read our, our, our mission. Take it from here, okay. There you go. Our mission is to encourage and enhance opportunities for every person willing to work and promote inclusion and diversity through employment. So that really encaps encapsulates what we do. Um, let me just pull up, um, can we put that on the bottom? So we're this, just going to do a quick change of where our pictures are so I can see. There we go. There we Perfect. Go. Okay, now I can see the slides. Um, so we did just recently go through a rebrand uh, this past year. We were formerly Discover um, 26 Resources, and now we changed our name to Discoverability. One of the reasons why we did this as an agency was because we really wanted a name that resonated with 
the clients that we serve. Uh, we wanted to be able to um, talk about uh, the what we do um, in the community with the partnerships in the community with the work sites um, and, and really have a name that related to and encapsulated everything that we do and discoverability really um, speaks volumes to what we do. And this is a, a, a good brand statement that helps understand exactly what we what we do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read this. Through our experience, compassionate team and dedication to a high quality service, discoverability is not only helping people develop their careers, we're, help, we're helping them discover their abilities, passions and aspirations. So who are we? Um, our team is, uh, we're really proud to say that we have a lot of experience behind us. Um, each and every dedicated professional at Discoverability has education, experience, and expertise needed in the vocational industry to be helpful, to be a helpful resource and wealth of knowledge for clients and partners. With this level of experience, we are able to utilize our skills and capabilities to provide clients with training and opportunities they need to be successful. Um, so we're really proud of the fact that we do have a lot of education behind us. We have a lot of experience behind us. Um, and again, our goal is to help students become successful in the workplace. Here's a picture of some of our leadership team. I, Roberta, Roberta and Jamie, I don't mean to interrupt. I just wanted to share with you that what we're seeing on the screen is um, your slideshow with that first cover slide still kind of showing. So if you're progressing through. Yes. Yeah, we are, we are progressing, progressing through. through. Okay, so you might wanna have to reshare or um, Unshare your screen and reshare. That might work. Okay. Let's see. I'm so right. sorry to interrupt, but I no, thought. No, I'm glad you pointed that out. Thank you, because we got pictures. We got a whole bunch of right. exciting things. We want, want to see that. that, right? Up. There might be a tab there where it says presentation view or presenters view. Yeah, give us just a moment here. New share. Let's see. This, yeah. All right, do you see leadership and supervisors? We do. We now see the slide that I think you want to see. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, doing awesome. All right. Thank you so much for stopping us and pointing that out. I don't want you to miss on. Look at these faces. <laughs> um, this is our leadership team, and this is. Uh, some of the important, important people that help us run this place. But um, one of the things that I wanted to point out on this page is um, as a vendor, as an agency, what really does set us apart is um, not only the experience that we have behind us, but the credentials that we have behind our, us too. Uh, we have many people on our staff that have CRCs, um, CVEs, Jamie here, LMHC, yeah. uh, Licensed Mental Health Counseling. Um, we even have some people with their doctorates. So, you know, as, as an agency and as a vendor of the state, we have to um, follow their rules and regulations on who we hire based on some education criteria that are put in place. Um, but we really do set the bar high for the type of education and experience that we do look for in our staff. Um, with that being said, um, I, I would say a majority of our, our staff also does have their master's uh, degree in higher education. So um, another thing about our agency that I wanted to point out is we are a diverse group of people, uh, young, old, men, women. We have a lot of people that speak um, uh, other languages as well. So there's a lot of different populations, which uh, enables us to be able to provide services to, including um, bilingual Spanish English. Um, we serve the deaf population. We have a few people on our staff that um, can communicate via ASL. We also have someone on our team that can speak Serb Serb Serbian, Croatian, and um, Arabic as well. All right, so one thing about our agency is we are very client focused. And th the best way I can explain this is it's a very individualized service, but I will go ahead and read this. Um, at Discoverability, our clients are our passion. We devote ourselves to providing high quality, compassionate and reliable training and career services for each and every client. We create a caring environment where clients feel heard, supported and encouraged, where they feel motivated to discover their skills, further their training and excel in their career. So, you know, I talked a, a little bit about the experience that we have, the expertise that we have, but we're, we're, we also bring 
uh, a lot of passion to the table. And it's something that we look for in every single uh, member of our team when we bring them on board. We are solution based. When we see our when we see our clients are succeeding in their careers, we know it is a job well done. That's why we do what we do. Um, from the get go, we are solution based, always thinking ahead to what success will look like for each client. We are problem solvers who collaborate, think outside the box, and utilize our resources and networks to ensure our clients are set up for success. Um, so this is just a, well, a little map of, of who we serve. Um, for those of you who are out there that um, are in vocational rehabilitation, we do serve area two and area three. Uh, we service seven, county, seven counties in central Florida. So Orange, Osceola, Polk Lake, Central, Brevard, we're missing Volusia on there. Volusia and sometimes uh, yeah. Hillsboro. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're, we're kind of, yeah, we're, 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 all, we're all over Central Florida. Uh, we have eight offices. We have 50, almost 50 employees. Um, our main office is in Orlando. And I do want to mention that a lot of people on our staff are working hybrid schedules. So although we, we have these offices, um, and, and some of our staff could kind of come and go. Um, many of our people on our team are working from home a couple of days in the office and, and really we're working remotely um, based on our client's need and, and we wanna be able to, to, to meet where, where they're most comfortable at this point. Uh, some fun highlights and stats worth mentioning. Um, like I said, next year we, are, next week, not next year, next week we are celebrating our 16th um, anniversary next Wednesday. So we're excited about that. We've been around. Um, so we also just hit number 5,000. Our 5,000th individual was placed into uh, a job. So I just ran a report to see where we were and it was exactly 5,000. Um, so that's a, a pretty cool goal that we just reached. Um, and another thing worth mentioning is this year, we have nine employees reaching their five-year work anniversary. So I think just, uh, it really speaks volumes to the retention that we have, um, the team we have in place, and uh, it's not really a revolving door around here. People, they love what they do, they're passionate about what they're doing, and, and they're sticking around to do it, so. Okay, so discoverability, we're, um, we're contracted out through vocational rehabilitation. Um, Voc Rehab is a state and federally funded program and they help people with disabilities obtain or maintain employment. So we're gonna talk a little bit at the end about how you can enroll with their services, become, how you can become eligible for their services, and then you can be referred back over to us so that we can help uh, students with um, helping them with their career goals who qualifies for our services, transition youth population. So we are now servicing um, students age 15 to 22, any student with a 504 plan or an IEP. Um, we're gonna get into the services that we're providing, but we are providing all transition youth services, including the career exploration, the training programs, and those um, Weebles, work-based work learning experiences. Uh, we also serve an adult population and anyone that's eligible under um, VR's eligibility, then we can also help them with a wide range of services too. So what do we do here at 2-6? I'm gonna hand it over to Jamie. All I right, 2-6 again. First of all, I gotta say, you know, here hats off to everybody who has had to endure um, pres presenting uh, using Zoom and various platforms throughout this entire year. I've blessed these parents, students and teachers for doing this. So. <laughs> It's not, uh, not always easy, not always fun, but somehow we certainly make the best of it. So again, thank you for being here today. Um, I'm going to talk to you some about the Vocational Evaluation Department. Um, the VE department, as we call it, uh, conducts two types of evaluations. The first one is the Comprehensive Vocational Evaluation, and the other type is the Worksite Evaluation which was previously called the CBSA, which is the Community-Based Situational Assessment. So the CBE is an excellent exploratory tool used to assist individuals in assessing and recognizing aptitudes, uh, vocational interests, academic strengths, and cognitive abilities. Uh, students complete a customized testing battery uh, that's created specifically to fit their need. 
Um, for our transition youth population, the evaluations primarily focus on identifying potential career interests and career exploration. Um, interest inventories are often the starting point of that career exploration process. So these surveys are available um, in both in, in reading and non-reading formats, um, ensuring that every student has the opportunity to fully participate in the evaluation process. Accommodations are provided uh, during the evaluation, and this include extended time, um, the evaluator reading the information aloud to the student, um, helping to describe any pictures uh, that are depicted throughout the assessments. Um, it can be repeating the information as necessary, anything that really helps to ensure comprehension. The CVE uh, may also include an academic or IQ assessment as well as some other tests which are used to uh, further identify specific skills. Um, and that may be something like computer skills, uh, maybe sorting and organizational skills, uh, mechanical skills, or an entry level baseline customer service skills. Uh, if an academic or IQ assessment is requested, um, our department is prepared with a range of assessments to fit the student's needs. Uh, for our transition age students, the primary academic test used is the TABE. Um, some of you know the TABE when I just say TABE, but for those of you that might not know, that is called the Test of Adult Basic Education. Um, in our department, we do use a locator test pretty frequently to identify the appropriate level to administer those assessments. Those levels come in easy, medium, difficult, and advanced levels. Typically, our difficult and advanced levels are used for those students who have uh, identified a very strong interest in pursuing maybe a two-year or four-year degree. Uh, depending on the student's need, uh, traditional academic testing may not be appropriate. So in this case, we tend to explore more of the functional uh, academic skills. Um, and that would be something like counting money, um, reading basic graphs and charts, uh, telling time both in digital and analog formats, understanding common signage and, and safety practices, following a basic recipe or understanding common abbreviations. So the IQ assessments that we have um, are available in verbal and nonverbal formats, as well as timed and untimed. I think one of the most important things to note is that in gathering our background information, um, working with the vocational rehab counselor and with the student and the families, we really strive to understand the, the customers or the students' history of accommodations and ensure that those accommodations are implemented while they're doing the evaluation. Um, test results are considered um, with the goal of only providing guidance and planning for future education or vocational goals, but it's really important to note that in this setting, um, no recommendation is solely based on their academic or IQ performance. Everything in this evaluation is truly comprehensive and that we consider the background, um, academic performance or, or coursework rigor, but also extracurricular activities, level of support, um, volunteerism, where they're at in that process for planning goals. Um, we look at their strengths, um, their desire and, and how focused they are. Um, and of course, it's also observations made during the evaluation. So another component of the CVE, so, so far you've had interest inventories and sometimes a, an academic or IQ is requested, but oftentimes there are, is a request for skills and aptitude assessments. And so here I've just kind of broken down into the different types of categories that we have available. And this would be aptitude tests, risk tests, personality tests, skills tests, and emotional intelligence tests. So these may be used to identify an appropriate fit within a vocational industry or to identify strengths or areas in need of improvement. So once these tests are completed, a full detailed report is provided and the information is used as a guide to help the student make a more informed decision about their future career path. Here's just part of um, Part of a report summary, so you would see the total, uh, the percentile ranking, you see the, um, the spectrum here on how the scores would be, and at the bottom it generally gives you um, the more positive attributes of it and the strengths of the customer. And each one of these tests are different. We also offer hands-on assessments, of course, realizing that not every student 
Um, not every student is going to be most appropriate for computerized assessments. So we also offer a, a variety of hands-on assessments, including uh, cashiering, uh, providing change, uh, tasks that include ordering or classifying, uh, perhaps alphabetizing information, uh, refilling condiments, rolling silverware, or setting up a table for uh, restaurant patrons, folding or hanging clothing and sorting it by style, color, and size. And those are just a few of the hands-on assessments that we perform as well. So the reason why most of you are here for our transition age population. So the CBE largely focuses on this for this population. Um, it places a huge emphasis on it and the evaluators consider any history of volunteerism, again, the participation in extracurricular activities, self-reported interests, in addition to the results of the interest inventories which were done at the onset of the evaluation. So during this process, the evaluator engages in conversation with the student about their interests. Career exploration um, often includes videos, like a day life of type of video, which highlights a specific job title. So often we find that students may not have a realistic idea of what their job title or their interest entails when it pertains to actually being on the work site. Um, so this process helps them have a better understanding of the job duties and responsibilities. So let's take an example of this. Um, widely popular interest right now, it seems to be for the past year or so, is for students to want to become a video game designer, um, which that sounds awesome. I really pull up video games, that doesn't sound to me, but to many other people that sounds amazing. Um, what we understand in that process discussion is that uh, video game designer means uh, playing videos and getting paid for it, which would be awesome, um, but that may not always be the case. So after some further exploration and digging into videos and looking at possible coursework um, that's available online, the student starts to understand and learn at least that uh, you know, that position is something that really is focused on creating or editing code, um, utilizing or editing a script language, um, story writing, maybe incorporating artwork, um, enabling online access, and the list kind of goes on and on. And by the end, they've discovered, hey, maybe this isn't something uh, exactly what I thought it was, um, but I still really like to play video games, but maybe that type of thing is not what I want to do for work. Um, and that's just one example of the many. Um, another one would be animals working in the animal industry. Um, it would be great to be able to, um, you know, walk dogs or pet dogs all day. I, I love that too, but there's a lot more to it. And so this is part of that process is really diving deeper and learning what are the job responsibilities. The, uh, oh, let me go back just a second. I left out one, a couple important things on this. So in addition to, to uh, looking further into specific jobs, we also delve a little bit into the market, uh, labor market information. And through that information, we can find out what is the average rate of pay within the geographic region. Uh, one of the most important uh, factors from my perspective is what is the projected growth of that industry? And the labor market information um, gives, does give you a 10-year projected growth rate. It gives it to you in a percentage wise. Um, you can also research avail job availability within the student's geographic region so that we know if I really want to focus on networking and getting into a particular field, are there jobs available, which is obviously important for anyone. Um, additionally, we look at um, exploring related volunteer or internship act activities. Um, and we understand the, the work to understand the importance of networking. One final thing that we do through career exploration is the evaluator uh, connects with one of our community partners um, and we often do phone interviews. So if a, a student has a particular interest in an industry and that happens to be one of our community partners, we'll schedule a phone interview and that way the student has the opportunity to ask some questions um, that they otherwise might not be able to have the answer to um, and they get some really insight on that job and certainly on how to enter that industry. And again, that's really um, made possible through our employment specialists who have worked hard to kind of develop these networks with local businesses around each of our offices. In the final component of the um, vocational evaluation, so the first one was the uh, comprehensive vocational evaluation. This is a second type of evaluation. This is called a worksite evaluation, which was previously the community-based uh, situational assessment. So in the worksite evaluation, 
It can contain all or some of the elements that were in the CVE. So the interest inventories, the skills or aptitudes, and it may or may not include an academic and IQ assessment. But the primary focus on the work side of evaluation is getting out into the community and assessing the individual, learning those baseline entry level work skills. So we have a few options available for this. For students that may not really have any idea what they'd like to do, we can do general assessments, which look at their ability to follow uh, multi-step, single step or multi-step instructions. Uh, recall, can they recall the information that they were previously uh, given earlier? Um, what are their sorting, organizational skills? What are their entry-level customer skills? Um, what about their situational or area awareness? And, um, and safety as well. For the customers that have identified a vocational interest, we again touch base with our community partners and schedule an evaluation to be done at a site that is similar to the customer's level of interest. So if somebody just for example has an interest in you know, working at a front desk or working with an animal center, um, if we've got those community partners where we can schedule a worksite evaluation and that would typically be anywhere from one to three hours, depending on, uh, depending on the student. But one to three hours allows them to be within that environment, learning those skills. So during that time, the evaluator assists in, in giving the instruction. Once the instructions are fully explained um, and maybe practiced or demonstrated with the assistance of the evaluator, the evaluator takes a backseat and becomes more of an observer while the student continues to work and perform those basic tasks. Uh, during these, they do engage with management and other coworkers. So it's also a good opportunity to see uh, their level of adjustment. Are they able to adjust quickly or maybe do they need a little bit of extra time? So this again is, is our two, two of the types of evaluations that the vocational evaluation department does. So at the conclusion of the CVE or the worksite eval, a detailed report is sent to vocational rehabilitation. The report includes uh, the student's background information, a history of accommodations, test results, observations, strengths, and any limitations. Uh, the information is used to provide further guidance on education or employment recommendations, as well as accommodations, which we believe may help the student either find success in higher education or within a uh, competitive work environment. And that is all for the vocational evaluation department. Okay, so we have about uh, about five more minutes. So I'm going to run through uh, the rest of the programs that we offer um, pretty quickly and just give you really general overviews of some of the other services that we provide for transition students. So um, a new course that we offer, it's been a couple of years now, uh, we're now offering this class virtually and in person. It's a 20 hour program called self-advocacy. Um, it, it is exactly what it says. It, it helps give students um, the ability to, the strength and the ability to advocate for themselves. Um, I think this is a, a really great first step in giving students um, the independence that they need to be able to um, move into the workplace. So one of the things that, um, it's virtual in person. They focus on self-exploration and awareness. Um, they, it's a lot about self-discovery. So if you have a, a student that, you know, they hear their whole life that they have this specific type of disability, they, they might dive into a little bit more about what does this disability actually really mean to me? What kind of accommodations am I going to need in the future? How am I going to be able to disclose this in the future? Um, so they really learn a lot about themselves. Um, they also start to learn more about career interests and they take some tests to, to help them develop those interests and, and, and those first steps towards reaching their vocational uh, goals. They leave um, their self-advocacy class with a portfolio, which includes resumes, um, a personal healthcare information sheet. How do they make a doctor's appointment? They have their uh, phone numbers and health insurance information. So they start learning those steps to be able to really advocate for themselves. Um, they get a certificate, they have the results of some of the interest tests that they take throughout the course. Um, and they're also given uh, community resources. Um, if, if there's some things that they might need around the area that we could help them, uh, that would benefit them in the future too, we, we provide those resources as needed as well. 
Um, so just some quick feedback on that program from a student. I very much enjoyed the feedback I was receiving from my instructor about how I did certain assignments and how I can better improve on them when it was needed. I also enjoyed how in-depth this training was, and I feel like I was acquired some useful knowledge from this training. That was one of the students that just finished the program. Um, another program that we offer is uh, pre-placement training. This is called PPT. Again, this is a 20-hour course available virtual or in person. Um, it's, I do have to say it's, it, it says it's inspiring, engaging, and effective job readiness skills. So I think I, I, I'm really confident in the team that we have in place that it is a very engaging program. There's videos, there's assignments, um, and students learn how to find a job. Um, it, it, there's one-on-one -on -one staff available as needed um, so that they can work on their own strengths and, and what their goals are. Um, but it really is a great overview on how to find a job. So on the next slide, we're just gonna mention a couple of the topics that are covered. So it's how do I, how do I dress for an interview? Um, they spend about a half a day on interview coaching and mock interviews. Um, there's over 10 different ways to find a job. So they really dive into how to, how to look for jobs, whether it's going to a job fair or how to um, navigate a, a job board, how do I complete an application, um, those steps necessary to find a job. They also discuss once you find a job, um, they go into the paperwork on onboarding and uh, how to navigate some of those conflicts and those relationships with, with your coworkers. Um, and they also discuss transportation. How do I get to work? So um, there's a lot of a lot of information shared in that 20 hour um, period of time throughout the week, but it's it's some really great beneficial information to help students give them the tools to be able to go out and look for a job. Um, uh, OJT is also known as work experience based learning. We call them Weebles for short. Um, this has been a huge push with transition students this past year. So I would say in the last couple of years, actually. So what is, um, and I'm gonna call it OJT for short. Um, what is it? It's an opportunity for a host employer to mentor a person with a disability through actual work site experience. Um, this allows a, an OJT participant to gain valuable knowledge, skills, and abilities through temporary employment arrangements. So we partner with businesses all over Central Florida. Um, we, we have a lot uh, big, from big retailers like um, Walgreens and TJ Maxx and Five Below to small mom and pop businesses, uh, restaurants, um, all different types of industries. And we, we uh, are, the students have an opportunity to work at these different places. They get paid for it. And they, they're paid to um, get, gain some really beneficial, valuable uh, experience in the work site. So um, the workman comp is covered by the state of Florida. The students become an employee of ours, discoverability. So we actually pay them a paycheck. Um, and they go, in the, they go out in the community and they, they gain uh, experience in different work sites. So next slide. Um, this is just a testimonial on uh, an OJT, but we're going to go on to the next slide just so we don't run out of time here. Um, so like I said, it, clients have an opportunity to gain real world, world experience. I want to touch on the fact that we're not, the, with the OJTs, we're not always looking for their dream job. It really is just to give students um, experience in, in any work, in, in any job, whether it's how to take directions from a manager, how to follow a schedule, how to clock in and out. So these are some, some basic skills that students have an opportunity to, to get and gain um, while getting paid for it. And they see some industries that they might love and they see some things that they might not love. Um, so they, they have an opportunity to try different, different work sites to see uh, what works and what doesn't work. Um, as I mentioned, they do get a competitive wage while working. They become employees of discoverability, so we pay them. Um, but one of the things that is worth mentioning is they, they gain the experience of going through onboarding with a payroll. Um, so they have to provide information about direct deposit and taxes and all their you know, personal information so that they can get paid. But not only that, 
um, they learn how to clock in and out using um, payroll systems. So that's something that they're going to need um, in the future. So it, it's great, valuable experience that they have an opportunity to do. Um, one, the way the OJT is, works is the, the work site, um, the different businesses have an opportunity to train the, our employees on the different tasks at hand. Um, but it is, we also do have a lot of support in place. We have job coaches that go on site. Um, we help uh, with those essential functions of the job. We help build those natural supports and make sure that the students um, are successful in, in the different work sites. Um, some benefits to the employers, they're getting staff without payroll costs. Um, they provide work experience and training for adults, youth, and students. Uh, the comp uh, they help experience they help experienced workers develop new skills. So even some of our adults that uh, utilize this service, um, they might not have done it before, but they have an opportunity to go in, learn some new skills, and 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 be trained. Um, and there's no obligation for these uh, businesses to hire the students on board when they're done. So community partners, like I said, we have hundreds of different sites all across. Um, Central Florida, Amazon, Cheddar's, well, these are some of the partners that we've worked with before. Um, all different industries, automotive, business services, healthcare industry, we partner a lot with um, a lot of assisted living facilities in the community, other nonprofits uh, for some admin positions, um, really any type of, of, of position, uh, we partner with businesses all over. And again, it's a very individualized service. So if a student is looking for a specific thing and we don't have a business in place, we will do what we can to, um, to find a good site for that, for that student. Um, we do, we do um, find businesses, our, our team of employment specialists uh, beat the streets. They um, cold call on businesses. We find businesses through networking and referrals. Um, and they do a great job of, of partnering and building these relationships with work sites all over. Um, we're gonna go back to, okay. Um, placement, I just wanted to touch on real quick. Um, our, our organization does pro provide placement services. So um, yeah, we, uh, we help, we help uh, clients in a couple different areas with when it comes to actually finding a job in the community. Uh, we help them with pre-placement training. A lot of the, the topics that are covered in that pre-placement training class, our employment specialists work one-on-one -on -one with clients when the time comes to find, help them find a job. Uh, we do a lot of interview coaching and um, how to find a job, and we guide them through that whole entire process from start to finish. Um, part of our responsibility as an employment specialist in, in this placement piece is to help make those connections and, and uncover jobs that'll be a good fit, not only for the students and the clients, but for the businesses. We want it to be a perfect fit so that all parties will succeed. Um, and we do that in, and we, we conduct job development in a number of ways. Like I said, we beat the streets, we cold call, we look for jobs online um, and, and we have a, a job bank and a lot, of, a lot of resources to help us figure out uh, the businesses that are going to be a good fit for our students and for our clients. Bye. Do you want to go over how the process works? Sure. So how, how does the process work? So uh, for transition, uh, age population, for pro program details, anything about these services for transition, you can certainly contact us directly um, online at uh, www.discoverability.org. Um, there's a sign up sheet online. You can certainly call us. You can come in here to the Orlando office or shoot us an email. Um, I'll get you that information in a minute and uh, we'll help you with that process. Uh, step two is, is you do need to be a customer of vocational rehabilitation in order to get referred to us. Our services are of no cost to the student. Um, that is through funding through the uh, through the government, state of Florida. Uh, Voc Rehab is, is the one who takes care of that. But once you enroll with Voc Rehab, Discoverability can assist you with enrolling. If you are already enrolled in vocational rehabilitation, contact your VR uh, counselor to request a pre uh, provider. Um, the third step is that is after VR has processed your enrollment, 
uh, and sends us your referral. We'll contact you to schedule an appointment and get started on your services. So again, three ways to partner with our organization. The first step is to touch base with us. Uh, you can do that by visiting us online, look under the forms and facts um, to locate the, the VR referral form, or you can simply scroll to the bottom to contact us and we'll help you through each step on that. You can pick up the phone, give us a call, we can help you that way. Um, or you can simply go directly to your vocational rehabilitation counselor. And again, in case you missed that earlier, um, to find your local vocational rehabilitation office, visit uh, rehabworks.org. That's R-E-H-A-B works.org. And then there's the information for you. So for more information, sure, visit us online. Um, we certainly welcome you to give us a call. I know today there's a lot of information to try to put in in this amount of time, um, but give us a call or certainly follow us on social media. All right, thanks to you. Thank you again, everybody. Franklin, are we there? Are we gonna um, answer any any questions if there are any? Sure. Hey, yes, Megan. Oh. Oh, Megan, go ahead. Oh, you hi, you address. I didn't hi. know if you were. No, you're, we only had one. It was if your self advocacy course is part of your pre ETS. I, I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? Is your self advocacy course part of your pre ETS? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's a service that um, can be provided just through a referral of your VR counselor or the VR tech can uh, request that type of service to be provided. And also we have another one. With job placement, how long does a student's employment count as success? Um, th that varies, but we follow along our students um, Typically through a 90 day period, um, we uh, part of our service is uh, making sure that they transition successfully onto a job and we have to um, help them maintain employment for the first 90 days and depending on the referral type, it can be 150 days. Wonderful. Any last minute questions out there? Maybe burning minds want to know. Do you assist with additional placement? Do we assist with additional placement? That's um, all it said. So I'm not sure if it means if something happened, like post 90 days. Post 90 yes. days. So yeah, we, um, again, like I said, our job is to make sure that clients are successful on the job. Um, that's why there is that 90 day and 150 day mark that we have to achieve. Um, I think one of the most important things for us as an agency is providing a, a, the support necessary to help them succeed and to go above and beyond when, when, when we need to. Um, and sometimes that means going on site after we close a case not only to help uh, the client when necessary, but also it's important for us to maintain those relationships with the work sites. Um, and they, you know, we want them to know that we're a phone call away, we're going to be there if a client needs them. Um, you know, sometimes there's a change in scheduling and the client might need some additional training to help them understand it, or there's a new task involved in their job, or there's some, um, you know, a, a new computer module that a, a client needs to complete and we'll just go on site and help them as necessary. So we do provide those post-employment uh, job coaching as, as needed, of course. And finally, there it says, is this service only in Florida or other states? And I can kind of answer that just because, so two, six, or Discoverability, sorry. Oh, it's hard, sorry. Um, so vocational rehabilitation is a federal program. So it's in all 50 states. Now how um, the businesses or the service providers are, that may differ a little bit. And as far as I know, discoverability, you're not in other states. You're only in central Florida. Correct. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And um, yeah, the different, different states um, do provide services differently, like with VR here in, in or in Florida, they contract out vendors like ours to do the legwork. So we're the ones with the, you know, kind of 
boots on the ground or <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So we're the ones that are out there and we're making the connections and, and actually doing the legwork to help clients find jobs. So um, they contract out agencies like ours all around Florida to help um, students with these types of services to eventually get to the point where they will become employed. Um, I, I know in some other states, the VR units actually do the type of work that we're, we're, we're doing. So it does vary from state to state, um, but VR, it's, it's, it is 80% federally funded, 20% state funded. Um, so there is a lot of federal funding, to, especially right now with uh, serving transition students. Thank you. And we do have one final question and I know it's time to go everybody. So please make sure um, we have a survey back in the app to say, hey, how did you like the session and all of that. But final question, why were you guys called 2-6 originally? Do you know? So um, yeah, originally um, as someone goes through the vocational rehabilitation process, they're coded. So like when they go in for an, a, an assessment, they might be a five. And then when they are in service, they might be a 10. And the goal is to get them to a code of 26. So when they become 26 or successfully rehabilitated, and our goal was always to help uh, VR and mutual clients achieve that, um, that code of a two six, so it's 26. That's cool. I never knew that either. So awesome. Yeah. Good question. Yeah, well, so the is so a lot easier to explain. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I agree. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. If you need anything, Franklin and I.